right, welcome back to part two today. We're gonna get this sleeve knocked out and hopefully get make my goal for the day. So if you were here earlier today, thanks for stopping in. Uh, feel free to drop off any questions you have uh, and we're gonna begin blocking in this area. If you've been with hanging out with me the last couple of days while I've been working on the drapery, we're gonna do very similar process of uh, put, dropping in um, these big blocks of, of color, uh, not quite that dark, that's not what I want, happens sometimes, and I'm going to just begin really rendering this part. This is going to be nice, we're going to get a lot of good volume from this section, so I'm excited to get it in. Sean's not in at the moment, but, uh, but he'll be back, so I'm currently without a moderator. But um, I'll be uh, peeking for the questions here and there throughout the day. And we'll pause. Probably about another 30 minutes or so, and uh, Sean should be back. But thanks for being here, and... Hopefully we get some good painting done and hopefully you get your questions answered too in the process. So right now I'm working with two different brushes, just a light and a dark brush. And I'm going back and forth on those, just blocking in these major um, relationships here. Some fun shapes down here where this comes together in this elastic. We'll try to describe it. At the same time, we won't get too, too detailed. Just finished this area earlier today. So I think we're on track to, to meet the goal. Fun working right up to the edge of what I was just working on. The paint is nice and wet. It's hard to keep that going throughout the entire piece when you're working on something as, as large and involved with this. So there's some level of just kind of getting used to parts of it being dry before you'd like it to be dry. I think it's nice if I can work into areas that are next to the sections that I'm currently working on if they're if they're wet. And there's ways you can add a lot of um, like walnut oil or things like that it can really extend dry time. Uh, but I find just ends up extending it a little too long for my liking. So instead, I I just kind of deal with deal with it as is and. Oftentimes I'll, uh, especially if I get in an area that is surrounded by um, spaces that are dry, I'll do a little bit of oiling out. If I have some walnut oil gel from natural pigments that I like for um, getting all the color and the areas around the spaces that I'm working on basically ready to accept paint. Some fun shadow shapes here. And that's that's all I'm looking for when I'm when I'm doing these parts is just to find those little puzzle pieces and working them together, working them together until until they, you know, get there. And 
once we get there, it's really exciting. I have a little bit of a cold, so forgive me if there's some sneezes and some other things along the way here. It's uh, struck our entire house. Well, st struck the kids, and as a parent, uh, it's inevitable. <laughs> you know you're going down, just a matter of when. In the past couple of days, I've talked about this phenomenon that in trying to capture the light that falls on, on on drapery. You know, there was a long time with which I just I kind of assumed the nearest the areas nearest the light caught the most light. So if you know if it was something this big um, fold kind of sticking out, it was that topmost spot that was really capturing and hold on to that light and what I've discovered is these hollows the valleys and not so much the peaks that really capture the light because the light hits in the same angle that it hits some of these the, the there's the exact same angle uh, but yet in here in the valley it's bouncing around more creating kind of an intensity uh, in those areas and, and so it's it's always amazing to me how it works. It's sort of opposite than what I would think. Um, like it would be brightest near the areas where it's tallest, right? Near, no, most near the light source. Uh, it works a little differently than that. And so when you're getting your st structure down for your cloth or your clothing, your fabric. Um, just think about how, like what's, what's happening here? Um, you know, in these valleys, where can I really get some of that light going? In working on these areas where, you know, there's supposed, supposedly no color, you're looking at a white fabric. There, there is always just a little bit, you know, white is never just white. And, um, and, and so finding the color is key. You know, this, there's a there's a slight warmness to this kind of linen material. And so really working on endeavoring to capture that just slightly. And I think I'm doing okay today.
I am my own worst critic, so if I'm if I'm pleased, well, pleased may be a strong word. If I if I'm at least sat, if I'm satisfied, then and I know I'm doing all right. <laughs> And if you're not yet, you should get excited because in the coming days we're going to get to the part that everyone wants to uh, wants to work on, wants to see. We'll be working on the hands, the faces. Um, and yep, those are always really satisfying. I think it's important to remember how critical um, the rest of the piece is. Uh, you know, those those are only as good as everything else that surrounds it and I think there's a tendency to just want to see that sort of thing work um, and and forget that you know the overall knowledge of the way drapery works and in spaces ideas of color and those are all really important to the creative process and you know they they all make good paintings when when worked uh, in concert with one another so i definitely know that you get excited to to see those parts um but i think equally spending time really learning how to work simpler forms like drapery, which, you know, is not gonna, you're not gonna misdraw a fold necessarily. I mean, yeah, there's ways it can go wrong, um, but there are certainly ways you can misdraw uh, facial features that can make the viewer very uncomfortable. So I think there's a lot to learn in this space that is often overlooked um, and even just something as simple as you know we're working on a, a white fabric or a near near white fabric and I get it that's you know that's not the most exciting thing to watch um, but here's where where the where great opportunity to train uh, comes in to be really good uh, so you can so you can approach those areas that are more difficult because your eye is used to using a comparative drawing method and a comparative painting method to the point that you're seeing where things go you're you're seeing kind of where they sit and how it works um, you benefit uh, tremendously from it
So far so good. So at this point, I'm just kind of describing this sort of top half, paying attention to the lights that I see there and slowly working my way around to the darker side of the sounds of the city in the background. I've had to piece some of these uh, images together. And so there's a little bit of invention that's happening here uh, right now. Uh, I'm kind of just guessing what the cloth would do. Um, Soften it just um, Puppy sleeve time. Really nice bright white on the side here that I want to get a little more right there. You know, this being now day four, no, day three of. Uh, working on drapery, um, it, it's certainly becoming, it's starting to I don't know, I, I just I just can't get, get used to it as as with anything, you know, you, you do it day in and day out and you're like, oh yeah, that's, 
it's the way that kind of works. Um, yeah, that's good. So it's feeling a little more natural. I can lay these shapes in swifter and make it a little more headway faster and um, you know if I talk a lot about painting swiftly it's not in the interest of doing it just to do it it's, it's doing it because there's something that happens in in the quick sketch or the quick capture of what you're working on that I think is the most honest reaction. And I think therein lies the, the value in my, my studies, um, paint for the model, we had to do numerous um, exercises, many of which, you know, were basically set to make you lose, like capture this figure in 15 seconds or, um, and obviously paint pretty rough but drawing you know it was kind of possible and I just realized how good those were um, because they really got you going seeing the important parts and disregarding the rest Working with a light brush and a dark brush. I can kind of go back and forth and keep working them until I feel like I've kind of got that spot, whatever it, whatever it is. Get that value right.
not quite that dark in here in this space, but. We're about to turn and lay in some darks underneath here. So I definitely learned a lot um, in streaming this as to what people want to see and what they don't care to see uh, and big, not not all, all that much of a surprise, but um, people definitely don't care to see anything without color. So in doing my um, like underpainting and even like just the, the fabric today which you know is, is, is really going places is changing uh, very dramatically um, and, and in short order I might add I'm making good time so but uh Lack of color uh, does not interest people, which uh, that's not good. I mean, the one of the best ways to learn anything is about is about value, um, and if and if that is even too difficult to kind of sit and master, then forget about color. Um, so I'm a little. Kind of a little shocked at uh, how few people are, are tuning in for what some of the most important basic foundational parts of painting and, and art making in the uh, representational and realist realm. I mean, value is where you're going to get the results all those results you are hoping for every time you pursue a piece so I'm a little shocked
welcome to the stream. Today I'm working on this white uh, drapery. And my, my goal was to kind of finish the sleeve, this uh, back and this sleeve today. Looks like I'm making a uh, decent time, so I'm kind of happy with how it's going. If you have any questions about the process at any time, even if you're watching this two years from now, just drop a comment in and I'll, I'll answer it. I'll try to be really good about answering comments. You know, I can do so right now because there's, there's not a, I don't have a ton of subscribers. So glad to, glad to help where I can. And ultimately, I want you to be able to make the things that you want to make. And I don't know, that's why I'm doing this. So please, your questions are more interesting than me saying the thing, same five things about uh, painting folds and fabric and, and drapery that I have for the past three days. So, <laughs> But uh, hopefully uh, today we'll wrap that up, I think. I mean, maybe we'll, I don't know if we'll get to that or not. I'll have to be really on it. Which, got some good, good energy right now going, so it might happen. Is that Shauna here? Hello. Guess what I got? Um, a frame? A half a frame. Half a frame? I'm just kidding. I hope not. I got this whole thing. We need the whole thing. <clears throat> I just finished up a, a commission. Going to be delivering it on Wednesday. So, Wednesday evening. Oh, this is something I haven't put to Sean yet. Hey, hey, Sean. Vince, what's up? About wa watching uh, the kids from the hour of about 4.45 to, I don't know, uh, maybe maybe close to 5.30 or so. Can I just stand in front of the TV? <laughs> well, I mean, you could. You could play Sorry with them. Or Slapjack. Yeah, but or... they're so much better than me with everything. Just... Yeah, you're good. Thanks, man. Hey, did you see my thumbnail? Uh, I, yes, I did. What so, do you think? It's looking good. Is there, is there a, uh, a way to angle uh, drapery as well? The way you angle, angle the rest of the text? Mm -hmm. Probably. Just make it, you know, wacky. How'd the drop off go? It was good. Everything worked out. Good. Card is there. Good. Were they feeling generous? <laughs> Oh, I have no idea. Well, well, when I, I was like, hey, Anna, see if they will. Uh, I just said, ask them as a courtesy if they would uh, patch the spare tire. So I don't know if they're, if they're feeling generous or not. But 
I hope so. And then after you uh, do that one, you can use uh, different, maybe just different colors for each day and then new pictures. I'm assuming that was your plan on the rest of the thumbnails. You wanted to make the thumbnails like this, but just different colors in a different picture? Yeah, different colors, different picture along the way. Um, and then also in the description, figuring out kind of the overview of the video, what I'm working on that day. Um, bearing in mind some of the things that I like always say <laughs> and then just uh, include some links to the website to to patreon to um, yeah. and really once you make one of them they can kind of all be the same format except for what I'm working on that particular day. Okay. And when in doubt, um, just look to the, the older videos and, and how uh, David Downing structured the uh, description in each of those. Okay. Thank you, David Downing, for doing all the research way back then. Yeah, the kids did really good while you were away. Explain the situation. <laughs> and they rose to the occasion. Pretty good kids. Did they say when it would be available for pickup? Um, I asked Anna, and Anna said that they said 31, but she wasn't sure if they were talking about minutes or hours. So, no idea. <laughs> she, she didn't know what they were saying? Yeah. That's funny. Well, 31 hours would be weird, because that would be... At like 10 p.m. next day, so maybe they maybe it's pretty quick. Maybe they're fast about it. It was like the whole like airbag thing. I think. Oh, well, they all they have all the magic tools, unlike we did when we did our fan project. Yeah, we did great. We did do great. Uh, the, it worked real well. The it's just amazing when you have all the right pieces. What can happen? <laughs> so I guarantee you they have the screwdriver that we didn't have. Oh yeah. To get the <laughs> and didn't have to make their own. <laughs> right. Um, with completing this, um, I think tomorrow we we'll really focus on, I think Anna has an appointment in the afternoon, but um, we'll, we'll focus on promoting more of working on the figure, on the face, or also we'll shoot out more things to Facebook and Instagram. Okay. 
we've seen in the past, you know, 50% of the traffic could come from that or something like that. Yeah, that's so, okay. So we will aim to... That's the thing that's hard to do so well. To prep all that. So day seven was drapery as well? Yeah, um, might take a peek. That would have been red, red drapery. Yeah, should I just do red drapery? Yeah. Because it looks like that is like what you were working on on the day. Yep. I might. Yeah, because I think that's when I was working on the thing. Coming your way. Just via text message. Um, of today is not going to look too much more dif different. And I can definitely um, notice that uh, today the just number of people is pretty low again. So yeah, it doesn't look like Monday is a big day. I mean, Monday might be a big day if we were doing the face or hands. Uh, yeah. Like big color. Mm -hmm. I do think you're right. There definitely is an amount of desire when it comes to that kind of stuff. Probably is a something that happens later in the week. That's thumbnails all to look kind of the same or can it be completely different because this picture is a lot wider and so if I try to open it up farther well don't well, zoom in and get it in close I mean yeah you, you've got you've got all kinds of things you can you can adjust in there um, it doesn't have to be the picture set but can be cropped and moved around in, in such a way that um, Create some variation, but also shows that we're working on the same thing. So, uh, however, that best works together. Well, variation, but definitely take note this is a series.
So again, where we have this elastic down here, you know, there's a lot going on. And I think it's just important to ask, you know, what are the, what are the parts that are, that I really need to get in? Um, what is going to be fine without each one of those little folds? You know, when I, I kind of lean back, I unfocus my eyes, I see how it's looking, and that's when I notice, hey, you know, really where it's at is, I mean, I mean, it's working, it's there. And so, you know, I don't want to do too much more um, and just make a whole lot of unnecessary uh, detail. I think I've got that sleeve fairly blocked in. I'm gonna take um, take my kind of buffers and my paint draggers and just kind of create some of these shapes here. Reinforce the fold. And you'll, you'll notice I'm, I'm following the fold and I'm pulling, just pulling the paint around the corner there. Motions are very rounded because we we know this is a shoulder. We know it's coming out, it's coming down, and so the more that the stroke is rounded this way, the more we're going to send it forward. And then when I do the same here, we're going to send this back. It's going to make it come. Similarly, this these these strokes also make this top area move back in space, makes this area move forward, and. Pretty amazing. Sometimes it gets a little tight, I'll use my, my little buffer brush. Uh, 
and these marks really help. Tell what's happening, which way these are going in space. So when we kind of hit this side, then I'll do the very opposite. Start pulling it this way. So I can take this and then move, move it in as well, just following that contour. here. just about got that sleeve blocked in. Um, colors that I'm really using <coughs> are lead white, uh, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to achieve this uh, these these whites these uh, kind of grayscale mixture uh, for the white drapery my black is burnt sienna and ultramarine so ultramarine blue and I'm just mixing white into that to create a gray and and then when I need a little bit more yellowy warmth I'm using the yellow ochre, um, but each of those, you know, with the ultramarine blue, I can tilt it a little bluer. I can tilt it a little more toward burnt sienna. It just all all depends on which way it needs to go. And it gives a lot of maneuverability to um, to having to build up something that is essentially a grayscale, uh, but gives it just a little more can be played around with. All right, I'm gonna shift gears. So I think I'm ready to bring this bottom section. I didn't really think I was gonna get to, um, but kind of looks like it's, it's gonna happen. I didn't plan on it, so hopefully the same way that the rest has been going, I can move swiftly, intuitively, and, and capture this and kind of make it within my time. I've got a, another um, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, it's a big section, but there are also big areas of, of color. There's not a lot of little details that are going to get difficult to capture. 
And what I'm going to run out of is uh, my mix, my mixes of, of paint. Just made uh, an error. Usually I like to work left to right, being a right-hander. I'm less likely to put my hand in wet paint if I work it that way. At the same time, I like to work dark to light. Where I can, I feel like there's good stuff that happens. Um, when I'm working in that way, so. Just gonna live dangerously today, I guess. I'll go ahead and put these darks in here. That'll really give a start of what we're trying to do down here. One of the things I really like about you know, this particular pose is you know, the way it pulls on, you know, we know this is the hip the leg coming down here, the knee, and that's all done by uh, by the drapery. So, you know, sometimes it is, while you have a little bit of fudge room when it comes to drapery, it doesn't have to be exact, sometimes it is really important to, to ensure that, you know, for the most part, you're keeping your drawing, even if something is, you know, seemingly forgiving as drapery somewhat on on track because we do yes we we want to feel uh the figure underneath we don't want to lose that
in these bigger expanses. I'm using a little more thinner, paint thinner than I normally do. Sometimes you put too much color down. There's always some level of hesitation every time I jump into a new area. Uh, I really don't like to stop unless I get to good stopping points. And you know, part of a painter's day is just time management. You know, what, what do I realistically have time to do today? Thanks to you on the live stream, you're uh, you're pushing me uh, in in good ways. Also keeping me on task. Let's be honest, because it's really easy to get distracted. There's a lot of accountability that happens too. <laughs> Just being here. Which is good. I've said before, dark areas in the drapery are a little more forgiving. They can be more linear, they can be more of a wash. Um, and, they, and they'll still do a really good job of telling um, the information that's needed. Sean, if there's any comments, let me know. Yeah, I'm checking. They're not so far. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, again, I don't anticipate a whole lot of action on a day like today, but just in case. Yep. Thank you, thank you.
any pictures from day five? Looks like you're working on. <coughs> you basically had the background done. And <coughs> Bless you. Uh, probably not. Um, I might have. Well, maybe I do. Andy Tingwei says just watching. Hey Andy, good to see you again. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. I guess kind of here, Sean, but part of it's kind of dried out and sunken in, but it's okay. I'll send it your way. Okay. It'd be nice to see uh, in each of the thumbnails that, oh, that, and this was a new part or whatever, some of it may not be that, that clear, so. How's the weather in the AA today, Andy? It's code. It's code. So no one knows what we're talking about. I have no idea. I used to go to those types of meetings, but... <laughs> See what I did there? Got you. Right, so since I have somebody to talk to, <laughs> there might be someone paying attention. Andy, it's great to have you. We've got four people right now. Oh, we do. All right. Yeah, good. Sometimes keep them entertained, man. That's good. That's good. Sometimes, sometimes the uh, the black and white. You know, this is. I don't have the color. You know, kids kids these days they like they like color. You know, no more black and white movies. Actually, there's there's some like Indian movies that yeah. are pretty well that are black and white. Yeah. Now, if you ask me to name them right off the top of my head, I definitely couldn't. I've I've got one. Like I I can be relevant this this one time. Do it. Uh, I, I think it's the Lighthouse, right? That's a recent one. Is that what it was called? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. You wanna look it up? Um. Yeah. The light. Lighthouse. 2019. Yeah. Um, yep. It's got Robert Pattinson in it. Yeah. William Defoe. Defoe. It was, uh, I, I did watch it. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really a horror person. And I, I didn't, I thought, I didn't think it was a little too, uh, like, horror genre y for me. Um, was it about a lighthouse? Yeah. And just, like, a couple guys going crazy. Uh, it's, it's supposed to also follow. Uh, I don't remember what Greek myth. Um, actually, really wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I mean, uh, not 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 that it's not Indian cool and all, but um, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's pretty dark. I don't know. I'm, I I respond pretty negatively to that sort of thing. So um, so if you so if you're on the stream and you loved it, uh, I'm sorry. I, just not usually what I uh, put into my mind. But definitely, and I do try to be careful what I put into my mind. So. Well, things that we let into our mind are the things that control our lives. Well said. Thank you. I kind of just stumbled over that. I didn't think it was very well said at all. But I, I knew what I was trying to say, but it just wasn't coming out right. I was there. I was there with you. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So I'm really just hunting around for these shapes of uh, color and um, building up the, these areas of, of, of fabric. Andy wants to know what movie we're talking about. Uh, the Lighthouse. Um, I think I was, you know what, I, I had it, here's the thing, I think I even had it on, 
like I was just cleaning the studio and I just sort of had it on in the background. I wasn't even paying a whole lot of attention to it, but there was just enough uh, scenes that I guess I'm just not really used to taking in. Um, that. Just uh, just got to me. Yeah, and Georgia's back. She said, "I think the lighthouse with William Defoe. I think it's just like a delayed." Yeah. You know, we were talking about that. And Robert Pattinson. Good to have you back, uh, Georgina. And so, at this point, rather than to really get uh, very specific, you know, I'm. Um, uh, I might need to check the. Does it look very blurry there, Sean? I don't know if I. Uh, let me check on my phone. I might need to double check my fo the focus on the, on the camera. It might be a little. At least I can do that here anyway. No, it looks good. I mean, it looks like you probably could do it a little bit more. A little bit better, but it's not too bad. Okay. So I wasn't planning on getting down to this section today, but uh, the rhythm is good, the paint's flowing. And I was saying this earlier, don't know if anyone was on earlier, but man, it is, uh, it's rough. Sometimes it just doesn't work. You know, the day is, it's not going so hot. Um, so I definitely would recommend, uh, if the day's not going good, just know that tomorrow is going to be different. Um, but today's going all right, so I'm going to keep pressing. Didn't really want to try to push myself to finish this. I felt like it might be a little too rushed. I know I, I like to work quickly and intuitively, but within reason. Let's see if we can create a little bit of reflected light underneath here. I'm seeing a nice. Reflected light shape. And probably when I kind of finish up this area here, um, I'll, I'll break out my, my other little brushes and just tidy up a little bit. You know, I always want to keep, whoops, sometimes, you know, I go in to lay, lay color down. I was like, well, that was, that was too much. I did not mean to put that much value down or, um, So there's a lot of a lot of painting for me. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest. Like, there's it's it's much more of I'm I'm sure for a lot of painters, professionals, that you know they they just intuitively see see that, and understand it, and get it. Um, there's a lot of times where I put down something like this, thinking, oh, that's gonna be the light that I want to happen right there, and it is not. Um, so I'm just going to leave that there for a second to just to show you that, um, uh, I get it wrong a lot and just don't, don't beat yourself up, but, uh, I mean, you know, make, make some changes, make the adjustments needed. Okay. Hey, what, um, what did you work on on day five? Just the background? I think so. I think so. I think the background, um, the setting. Maybe, I don't know what, what to call it. Setting? Yeah. Um, 
No, ba background elements, maybe, if that's not too long for a title. I may be able to work this in enough, but probably not quite there. So you can see I'm still keeping things kind of angular, um, not uh, for me, I think it produces just a, at least especially with fabric, I think it produces just a little more volume. And so I don't, I don't want to get too, too smooth. Um, I mean, my the way I usually paint anyway has a little bit of uh, uh, almost a planar feel to it. And so I'm, it, admittedly, I, I kind of already like that anyway. So this is, it's a little more of a stylistic choice, um, but I do think that it helps create uh, a little more volume. It might not be your cup of tea. And I like to say that a lot because there's there's some hills I'm willing to die on when it comes to painting and, and representational art and a few other things. Um, but when it comes to technique, um, I'm I'm not gonna say it needs to be done this way or it needs to be done that way. Um, my encouragement would be just do it however it works for you. For you. Um, I mean, I, I sat in a studio for years, uh, solo, just working on work, um, painting for a gallery uh, in Ireland, and I, that's, I just work, I just painted, and I figured stuff out, and I learned, I learned a lot doing it. You know, no one told me how to, and you know, YouTube wasn't too much of a thing then yet. Uh, and I didn't know about the places I could go and get training. Um, so I just kind of had to sit, look at the artists that I admire, and look at what I was creating and say, you know, what, what is this, what does this have? I mean, yes, this is for before really Instagram as well. And so, you know, who are the old masters that I have on my shelves? And, you know, what, what do I want to achieve? What, you know, what, what look? And, and then I just kind of started bumbling my way through that. And to a degree, I'm still doing that. And so I'm not going to say, hey, it needs to be done exactly this way, but this is just the way that it's uh, it's worked for me, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, you have about how you know in my own studies, you know how how it's come about. Mostly by trial and error. So I suppose I could have saved a lot of time um, in a classroom setting.
one thing too I like about having the underpainting in underneath uh, what I'm working on. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to get the coverage of white on top of my ground layer, which you can still see some of the ground layer color here. You know, I wouldn't be able to get um, this amount of uh, opaque color on it. That's just, that's just an aside, but um, is, you know, I can work with what's there and I can leave some of that showing here and there and it's still okay. And I, and I like, I like painting, even, even representational work that still leaves traces of its process. Um, because some of those, some of those layers are the best at describing certain parts. Um, you know, there was, there's areas, especially we get into skin tones and maybe some parts of the hair where uh, as it is, um, it works. And, and so letting some of that just show through is, is pretty amazing uh, because it's just there and it works. Um, so you don't have to like render it all over again, but um, finding, finding the layer that's doing the best job at capturing what you want and then, and then leaving it. Well, in fact, my, uh, my wife has made a lot of these, uh, garments, uh, for, for the paintings and, uh, so just shout out, she's good. I didn't know that. Yep. And even where they're not necessarily made, they are, uh, they're constructed on, on site. Uh, one of the fun things about if you're, if you're draping a model, Sometimes you don't really have to have anything. You just have the have to have the hint of something, and that's sometimes enough. The model doesn't necessarily have to get up and walk around the room. Or go trick-or-treating or anything. Like and how uh, you know the volume is feeling. It's feeling like it's there. So I'm happy with how it's how it's coming. Definitely feeling this uh, kind of overall volume because uh, so stating the past few days, you know, each of these is like a sphere that I'm trying to build. Yeah, there's a lot of other little things going in into it, but hopefully each of these is feeling like one major volume and then there's a lot of little tiny volumes that I'm building up but overall we're still creating that one big motion and you know light uh, pay, uh, careful attention to value and light helps that to be successful and um, kind of just continually going back and and asking okay where how close am I at this point, how where where am I now? And um, and eventually landing in that uh, that sweet spot where it's all working together.
<clears throat> and I'm sure if I painted a third layer on top of the second layer, um, it could it could get even better. Um, but then I'd be fearful of um, you know not getting not getting that coverage well, or I'd be fearful of losing some of the the sweet things that are happening with uh, with the rest of the layers sh showing through. So it was probably starting to get a little too dark at that point. Or too opaque, I should say. If I ever say anything weird, it's just because I'm um, I'm really lost in what I'm doing. Fumbling around, searching for words. Welcome to my life. <laughs> Do that all the time. So I'm just kind of working back and forth between these two brushes. One's a little darker, one's a little lighter. And so I can kind of build, I can take it back some, I can build some more on top of and until I'm arriving at an overall good paint sketch that I'm excited with. And then I will come back in and uh, just do some refining marks and some softening of, some, uh, of a few transitions. I'll try to describe them almost like I'm following the contour and uh, that's coming up very shortly. And then if you've uh, been here for the last 30 minutes or so, then you will have seen um, the, the process of paint, painting drapery from, you know, from kind of start to finish until I kind of get to a place I'm excited about. I still want some brush energy. I don't want to lose my brush stroke altogether. So there's uh, some care taken not to for that not to happen. Hey, what, what would you call this thing? Uh, uh, like the table and the. Book. <laughs> I don't know, jump, the jumping around day. <laughs> um, table and book, I think it was, uh, I was trying to fill in, I think I just had just enough time for it. You know, where you're like, I'm starting a little later in the day or something, and um, we could just call it, um, like maybe just building up the underpainting. We are updating the thumbnails for all of these live streams, so it's a big job. Sean, you don't like it. Sean, Sean's, Sean's on it. He's putting in, he's putting in the hours. I'm kind of wondering how many days we're going to have. And we've got to, of course, wrap it up with a, with a varnish day, you know, that'll be Christmas, Christmas time. I don't know if you know this about varnish, but I like, I think it's like Christmas. <laughs> well said.
sometimes. You just do things. And you say, whoops. Like right now. Like now is a big whoops. I'm gonna work I'm gonna work it in here though. It wasn't on camera, so it's okay. It was above the frame. Can you not see where I'm working? Oh no, I can see where you're working now. Okay. That's the whoops area? Yeah. Whoop. Okay. I think I think we're ready for that kind of that refinement step. So I'll sit down, uh, these two brushes, I will get out um, just a couple of kind of a buffer and then uh, this fan brush. And I like, I like using the fan brush to follow the contour. You know, I've built up some of the shapes and they may be fine just the way they are, but this gives an opportunity to kind of follow some of those shapes and build um, and build up. So I'll take I'll take this, and I I'll just kind of rake it over to the top here. So you're gonna kind of watch me just do this motion, and you know I'll wipe it off, but I'll I'll kind of come back and do it again, and I'll follow follow this contour. I might need to bring some more paint. There's a few areas that are aren't experiencing a whole lot of coverage. In here. And there. And you might have seen that that, you know, just does this little bit of a mark um, across here. Some of these areas that I've left from the the underpainting, I might I might have to go back in and adjust them. But so I'll do the same here. I'll just kind of take this, follow it up, and what I'm trying to do is create a few contour lines that are just telling us how this is working. You know, which way do we want this this to, f to follow so that we feel whether we realize it or not we, we our eye is perceiving those marks even if they're just the mark uh, from the light hitting some of the edges of the paint body and and that just starts to create a bit of a volume And so you can really, some of these edges can really be seen, especially where you've got. So can I pull this down, down and around? Sometimes it doesn't quite do what I want it to do. I can kind of remove, adjust, buff out some of the areas, but then and sometimes it, it just does a really good job of like, you know, I really want this to swoop in and swoop down in a way. I can just kind of drag some of the paint down. So what I what I forget to do is then clean up my brush, and so there's. I don't. And this is kind of just one motion. And I'll even follow maybe a little bump or two, you know, so we can kind of come into this section and then we can take it up and then down and then up again. You know, and it drug a little bit of paint there, you can you can tell. That's okay, I'll, I'll remove a little bit of that, but I'll still leave quite a bit there to just, 
tell a little bit about what's happening, those lines. Also, it's a textile, so um, it, that begins to start to feel a little bit like um, we're hinting at some of the weave of the cloth. And even when I'm coming back in with these, I'm following that same contour. And th this is a motion that I will continue to use throughout the rest of the piece. So even when we get into painting the faces and, and some of the more delicate parts, I will still use that motion. I mean, this can also be used for kind of negative space too, so where we have this dip um, I can take and just kind of work that just a little bit so that it, it follows that. And then of course the lines come up here and then they come around this corner. And um, they just have a great way of just adding to the overall volume by just a few small marks. Doesn't have to be much. And if I'm really concerned about an area that just it's a little softening, you know, I can break out my buffer brush here and just buff a few of them out. But even if I, but even if, if I do decide to do that, I will, again, follow the mark. Um, and so, so yeah, I think overall, uh, this is in, in a good space. Uh, when I lean back, kind of unfocus my eyes, I'm really feeling, feeling that volume in place. All right, so now I'm gonna move into this whole section. So there's some big, some bigger folds here. And, and that can usually go a little faster than trying to describe each, each one of these. So I'm gonna switch back to just my two brushes, my light and my dark brush. And I'll begin uh, blocking it in. Each of these are kind of the lights hitting each plane. Try not to, no, I've kind of gone a little lighter than I want to on these. Sometimes, just to break it up a little bit, these were starting to feel kind of too much the same size. I will purposefully make one bigger than the other. Um, and that is one of those things that when it's too perfect, if fingers are like too much in, in line or drapery is too, well, you know, same width, same width, same width. Um, that's just not the way life works. Maybe it did happen to work in the in the uh, during the photo shoot at that time, uh, but I am not gonna. I realize it's gonna be more believable and acceptable uh, to the viewer if if those things are, are addressed.
Because life isn't perfect. And sometimes, you know, I, there's a few bigger uh, just bits of paint and I'll just kind of, I need to break off. Causing a little too much of a relief. I'll just use my, my palette knife. Um, some of these others, I mean, they are a little bit of a nuisance, but. Not as critical in this area as when you get to the face. If all of a sudden there's a, in my case, if there's a weird cat hair somewhere where it shouldn't be, um, which happens often. Well, my cat, don't get me wrong, but he does make for some uh, a mess. Yeah, just with his with his mere hairy existence. All that said, out of uh, most love. Okay, so I'm calling this one blocking out figures for day three. Okay. Because it looks like that's what you were working on. So I'll just, I'll, I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do and then you can come back in and. Okay, yeah. Sounds great. Welcome, welcome. Is this your, if this is your uh, first time here, um, this is day eight of uh, painting uh, this piece. Um, so at this point, it's coming on. To, I mean, we're, we're we're documenting every part of it, so um, so that you can see the entire process and get an idea for, you know, what it takes to achieve uh, one of these pieces. And day eight, you know, I'm kind of looking out and saying, okay, well, how much, how much time remains on this? And I think we're definitely probably going into 12 days for sure. Um, and so I try where I can, I mean, you know, occasionally I'll miss a day just because I've got other, uh, just demands. Um, but you know, that'll, that's, that's easy. It's an easy two weeks, but I think it probably ends up being more like three with you know, wearing the various hats one does. Uh, as a small business owner, got to think about it that in that way. Um, even as an artist. Today's one of those days that I'm really grateful for um, hmm. just got a just got a message from beautiful bizarre art prize. 
We're super excited to tell you that your wonderful art prize entry has been featured on both the Beautiful Bazaar website and the Beautiful Bazaar art prize website. So you won. Uh, well, or at least we're, we're in. I don't know what that means, but... I don't know how bizarre I am. I'm I've got an hour left and a lot of real estate here. It's time to really kick it into gear. Most of this would still remain uh, wet enough to work back into, but if I don't have to, uh, it, it would be nice just to be able to call it kind of this whole area done in one day, walk away, and, and actually really satisfying day's work if, if that happens. So I'm gonna stick to it. just got some mail from me and I have the right to join a lawsuit against Walmart. <laughs> it's what it says. I don't know what that means. I'll take money from Walmart. A lot of lawsuits. It's good. We need we need justice. No. This uh, shadow line being cast is really soft, so I'm going to really try to soften up this shadow line. This cast shadow, cast cast on the uh, skirt portion there, light hitting this nice hit this hitting this fold quite nicely. It's days like today, um, we're having kind of rolling clouds. It's really nice that we have this camera that does auto exposure. Correction, it's a good thing. So 
it's usually this time that I I'll start to just block in a little more swiftly, swifter than I feel comfortable. In that moment where all that training working from the live model comes in handy. I'm putting down a lot more paint. Moving thicker, faster. I remember my art instructor, uh, she would, I mean, we, we would have one class period, which was start to finish two hours and 50 minutes. However, the model had to have a break within that time frame, and um, and so though I don't know maybe and there's a little bit of discussion you know beginning end of class, so maybe two hours, and. Um, Uh, my instructor would be like, okay, uh, you know, we, we have this model for this one pose today. This is it. And they're, they're not coming back. And so you just kind of say, all right, uh, let's do this. And then she'd also be like, paint everything you see, uh, which meant every person and their easel as we were all kind of encircling the model. <laughs> and so... She basically said, if you can see it, you have to paint it. Um, and so there are a lot of pieces in which, yeah, I painted the model, but I had to block in people, easels, um, each of them in a painting pose. And um, just unbelievable training. Uh, still, I'm grateful as much as it was. It's kind of stressful in the moment.
Might get a Kansas thunderstorm today. Do I feel do I feel a distant rumbling, Sean? Um, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, I'm, I do hear a little bit. Have you uh, have you eaten lunch? Uh, yeah. Good. But I was supposed to go to the store yesterday, but Sierra didn't want to go, so I didn't end up going. I was also supposed to do the laundry. This is probably not something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I love my fiance so much. And you hope she's watching right now. Yeah, and I hope she's watching. And if she is, shout out to you, baby. <laughs> I didn't get anything I was supposed to get to do yesterday because you're great. Because I love you. Because I love you. And I also could have been more proactive about doing it. All right, that was definitely thunder. All right. Or it could be like a war, war of the worlds thing. I can't talk about that stuff. <laughs> so, be kidding. Kind of okay with what's happening there. Gonna keep rolling. There's that cold, that family cold. Sean, I hope you don't get it. Thank you. That was episode two. I'm just finally starting to get over COVID that I got back in November. It would be cool if I didn't get sick too. Have you written the same word over and over again that it starts to not look right? Yep. You're like, that is not the way that's spelled. And then you look back and you're like, oh yeah, definitely is. But it just doesn't look right. For some reason, stream is doing that to me right now. <laughs> hey everybody on the live stream, what, since we said, use the word stream, what's a word that just really got you one time? You're looking and you're like, no way is that spelled that way. happens to me quite a bit. And also questions. Shout outs. If you're like, hey, I'm just here because I know you in real life. That's fine. 
We've got four people, but nobody's doing the thing. Well, for those of you that are uh, hanging out right now and watching, thank you. I really appreciate it um, for staying on and um, being a part of today. Even if you're, uh, you're not actively uh, watching, that's fine too. Thank you for just keeping it up and, um, and just being present. And if you stay in a little longer, you may uh, hear or get to see a thunderstorm. I don't know. Favorite brand of brushes and paints? Probably said this before, but I'd be curious. No, oh, sounds good. Uh, Andy, said. Andy, thanks for asking. Um, so I'm kind of a, a Utrecht student. I don't know, student. I, I just really like... I mean, this is what I'm used to. So uh, here's their mixed synthetic 239B. Um, this is their whole 239 series, Utrecht uh, mixed synthetic. I like them. They seem to keep their shape for a while. Um, and I've I've run the gamut and I've spent a lot of money. Um, I've spent, <laughs> spent a little money. Um, I've just been given brushes for free and used them. So. Uh, all over the place, um, but but really, I think I've I've landed on these as I just like, um, I like them. They seem to hold their shape for a while, and um, I was mentioning earlier today I really abuse my brushes. Um, I don't I don't wash them um, in mineral spirits or anything like that. I'm just uh, applying and I'm wiping out. Uh, because I don't, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the the volatile organic compounds present in uh, in a lot of thinners, and so I'm, I just don't want that um, in the studio with me, since I work at a home studio and I don't have a a an air filtration or a purification system or just a, a fan unit that cycles the air. Um, so there's a lot. Um, I mean, almost everything I do, I try to, um, kind of keep, keep that low. So I don't, I don't wash these brushes, it, um, probably the way they need to be. So they get absolutely full with paint all the way down to the ferrule. Um, uh, and you know, I, I clean them at the end of every session, uh, with, uh, Terpenoid Natural, which is just a, um, uh, again, doesn't, have any VOCs in it, um, but it helps um, still clean the brush and uh, like condition the bristles. Uh, but even still, though, paint going all the way to the ferrule like this is just, um, I'm not easy on them. And I just, I, I can't break bad habits like that. And um, cause it's just how I know how to work. And so, like, when I, when I find something that just kind of lasts for me, um, that I'm really happy. Artists everywhere swear by like rose, rosemary brushes, but I, 
I bought a, a pack and was, I mean, I, yeah, they were fine, but I, I didn't really, um, didn't blow my mind. Um, and so, uh, you track and the same for oil paint, although, you know, I'm, I'm definitely open. Oil paint is something I can switch out more easily. Like I use my palette right now. I've got some, uh, Rublev, uh, oil colors from natural pigments and um, I've got some uh, Sennelier, uh, and I've got Utrecht, the brand itself, and um, that might be it. Uh, no, 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 and I have some Winsor Newton, so like all over the place there. Uh, but but it's all but they're all the nicer um, quality things. So you know you can you can buy Winsor Newton. A uh, product that's really poor, and like the the Winton series, um, wouldn't recommend painting with that. It's a lot of filler, um, and it's going to be more frustrating than than anything uh, if you're trying to get good coverage, and and it just stays wet forever. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Windsor Newton, if you're getting their brand, that's fine. Uh, I think that the biggest thing is, is to get a corresponding quality. So you can have different brands, but as long as the quality, it's all, all the same, you know, if every brand has their like studio series or has, um, these like cheaper versions of their product and that's the thing you don't want to mix is like the cheaper version with, you know, a nicer, um, the, the nicer professional grade, uh, oil paint. Um, really, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm waiting to, you know, who's gonna, who's gonna like make, make me, let's get some sponsorships going. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll paint with paint, uh, with your paint. Just uh, show me, S send me some, I'll do it. <laughs> um, if you're a representative, uh, send away, I'd be happy to do it, um, use the product. But right now, um, I'm finding this, uh, finding it interesting because where I've normally used uh, Utrecht across the board, for the most part, I mean, sometimes there's uh, varying, um, like I said, there's other, other varying brands. But uh, I'm so used to Utrecht as a as a brand, just because that's what I started started with training with. And I just continued to use them because I felt like, for the money, the pigment um, saturation was really good, and um, it. Uh, but it's interesting using this product by Rublev, their lead white. Um, has a completely different feel, uh, which is apparently more accurate to how lead white is supposed to react. So it's kind of um, almost stringy when you pick it up, whereas the Utrecht oil paint is kind of like butter, same consistency of uh, you know, like soft butter, and um, and so it's yeah it I kind of don't care, <laughs> um, so so I. And, and of course, many, I mean, everyone who's everyone who's a painter uses Michael Harding. Um, and so I should probably be checking into that. Um, but so, you know, that's, that's kind of my really, uh, terrible question, terrible answer to that question. There's nothing specific, um, all, all over the place. And honestly, early on um, in my professional career, I had an opportunity, um, an old uh, Windsor Newton rep uh, wanted to get rid of a lot of her things that she just had around. And, and she, 
knowing that I was a painter, basically said, hey, why don't you come over and just take everything that you want, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And I was like, okay. And, you know, went, went, went over and I just loaded up tons of brushes, tons of um, oil colors, and um, honestly, it was a huge blessing at the time. And I have, I have just about used all of those brushes, um, and yeah, to the point where I'm having to buy, I mean, buy my own. He said, "Good stuff. Thanks for the student versus pro insight." One thing that happens if, if you're not using all of the same, it, you'll, you might, if you're like mixing one color with another and you want a one to one mixture, it's gonna be like a one to five mixture or something ridiculous like that if, if you're trying to use the student versus the professional. Um, they're just so filled with uh, stuff that just doesn't have to be in there. Um, but they made it cheap. And so sometimes cheap wins the day. It did for me for many years. So I'd... Charlene asks, what do you think of water soluble oils? Um, having, I've never used them. Um, and so I, uh, that, and that's a, so that, that's a great question. What do you think of them? Because I, um, if you've used them before, uh, I, I have no experience. So, um, I'd love to hear, hear your feedback and hear what you think. Um, and uh, like, yeah, I, I just uh, I just know very little, and I think I had a few uh, classmates and studio mates um, in college who used them. Um, and so I'm I am very uneducated uh, on that front. My answer usually is in a situation like this, is like, uh, use whatever works for you. Um, and, and there's just not a right or wrong answer. I mean, there's pluses and minuses. If you can only, if you can only afford the studio series or the, you know, the, the student paint series, then, you know, buy that and learn how to paint. Um, and, and, and get somewhere, uh, but. He said, no worries, I recently bought some for international travel, it was okay. an artist suggestion. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'd be interested to hear uh, how uh, how they uh, how they respond. Last time I traveled internationally with my oil paint was, I think, oh, nine. So it's been a while since I've been out of country with my paint. Um, have they, have they gotten kind of, uh, protective or have they, are they like throwing it away if they find it? If it's, um, I included a material safety data sheet with mine. Um, and I never had any problems in the past, but of course this is, you know, now 12 years ago since I've last done it. Ah, uh, do you hear the thunder over the Kansas Plains? Music's in my ears. Did, uh, were, you, were you able to answer, uh, did, you, did you have any problems traveling with oil paint? I 
I had the data sheet, but was worried about the solvents. Thanks mm. for your response. I'm joining from Ireland. All right. Originally from Canada. Hey, that's exactly where I traveled to and from, was Ireland quite a bit. Um, uh, I painted uh, for Colony Art Gallery uh, with Declan Mulvaney uh, for, oh, this is probably 07 to 09. And uh, yeah, it was a great time. So I traveled there yearly and um, uh, did, did a show every, every bank holiday um, in August. And we would have a, a little exhibition there in Clarny. And uh, great experience, just treasure so much of that time. I stayed in a little uh, town uh, called Carsevine. Um, there um, along the, I think it's in 90 or in 95, I don't remember. Um, uh, I guess the, the, the sticks of Ireland, as you might say, or, uh, it, was, it was lovely. Some of the best memories of my life. It's also kind of where I got my big break and was able to get started painting full time. Sean, it got significantly darker in here. How's the exposure looking on the stream? Looks fine. Okay. Props to smart cameras. Because the sky has turned from blue to a nice dark, dark gray. We're about to... Let's see if we can refocus it. It looks okay, but... Uh, I was thinking more exposure, um, which is we have it set to auto, so hopefully it's hopefully it's doing it on its own. Do you ever play with an, any other medium like watercolors or oh, I don't want to say that wrong gouache? Uh, close uh, gouache. <laughs> <laughs> Um, th thanks. Sh Sean is, is a great moderator and, um, he, he's, he's learning so many things about art, uh, that, that he, that he never knew he needed to know. Do you guys know that varnish is like Christmas? <laughs> um, so, so I did the, most of the experimentation I did with, uh, those other mediums was in college and, and now, you know, I've since, uh, really settled, um, into, uh, oil and, Kind of never looked back. Um, I uh, I like I like how oil is very forgiving. I can continue to work into it, um, and so that's one thing about like watercolor that I, I think I I always have a little more um, just hesitancy and. Um, you know, I, I, I want to be able to work with it a little bit, and I know watercolor is basically one shot and getting it right. And so I, I still think that that's the most difficult medium. If you guys have a TikTok, you can go to our TikTok, and I tried my first ever art piece <laughs> with watercolor, and I killed it. I really nailed it. And if you don't have a TikTok and you don't look at it, I'll just tell you that it's really, really difficult and I did a horrible job. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're kind of slowly figuring out that uh, figuring out TikTok. Sierra figured it out, but just because she uses it for her cats. Yeah, that you know it's good. You, you, people love the uh, love the pets. Uh, Charlene said, "Oh wow, I'm two hours north of Killarney. Oh, yeah. What was the gallery? We're heading to the Ring of Kerry. Any gallery suggestions?" Uh, so. So yeah, the Ring of Kerry. That's oh, that's so good. That's I mean, um, that's uh, the Ring of Kerry. You'll pass through Carsevine, and that's where I stayed uh, with an Irish painter by the name of Ted Jones. Uh, he was uh, kind of my mentor um, in uh, just like professional art, 
and becoming, um, you know, your, your own artist, uh, really kind of took me under his wing and, uh, she was a huge blessing to my life. And, uh, he passed away a couple of years ago and, um, I, I didn't, um, I wasn't able to see him beforehand and, um, uh, kind of breaks my heart actually. Uh, uh so, but, uh, we, yeah, I stay, I would stay in Karsavine. Um, he and his wife, uh, had a home. And, um, yeah, but, uh, I'd bike into town and, you know, I just, I just loved living in the area. I would paint, um, in, in my bedroom there that, uh, that I stayed at. It was a beautiful area. Um, having not been to Killarney, uh, since 2011 was the last time I went just as a, as for traveling. Um, I, I, I wouldn't know. Um, you can always, uh, check in with uh, Col the Colony Art Gallery, and I'd, rec I'd recommend, um, recommend that. Uh, Declan Mulvaney uh, is, the, is the gallery owner, and um, really he's, uh, he's another big part of uh, where I am today, is uh, just his investment in my work, and he, both he and Ted Jones inviting me to um, just come and start working and painting with them and being involved and gosh, uh, literally changed the trajectory of my life. Um, so now, now we're talking about some really deep, uh, life changing moments. Um, and so I'm, I'm, uh, definitely moved. Um, so, uh, no, no big recommendations, just a beautiful area. I mean, there around Karsavine, I spent so many um, days just biking around and hiking and um, the, the Ivorah Peninsula, I just know like the back of my hand, um, just up and down, up and down everywhere. And uh, yeah, no, no, I wouldn't know what, what would be there because it's been 10 years since I've been. So, uh, but, but I know Declan is still in, in operation. I'm not sure if he has, um, you might be able to look, uh, Clarny Art Gallery, I think it's clarnyartgallery.com, if, um, if they, if he still has a storefront in Clarny, I know there for a while, um, you know, when, when things were kind of rough, uh, financial times for just about everyone, um, they're following, you know, 20, 2010, 2011, you know, this, um, uh, he scaled back and did stuff largely out of his home, um, but now you know now times are different. So, uh, so he may have a space uh, for you to check out, and definitely recommend uh, seeing him. You can see a lot of Ted Jones prints, and so you can see the Ted who was kind of my mentor, um, and he he painted um, pub scenes as though uh, kind of Vermeer painted them, and so I mean, just imagine. Uh, you know, the, the kind of uh, heyday of uh, pub life. And um, he was painting these beautiful window lit scenes of the basically the things and the stories that he saw uh, growing up um, uh, in Ireland and just the various amazing stories and characters uh, one meets uh, in the pub. And so sweet miss him a lot. So glad you mentioned that it just makes me brings back a lot of great memories and I appreciate that. Wow, it gets so dark. <laughs> the the, uh, oh, wow. the 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 studio is is so dim right now because the storm clouds have rolled in, and um, radically changed. Uh, I don't think there's there's hardly any light coming in through my north window. Um, yeah, I'm trying to check the full extra.
even just there on OBS, Sean, you should be able to kind of get a, an idea of what it's looking like. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, we're good. She said, perfect. Thank you so much for your thoughts and your generous info. I'll head to the Killarney Art Gallery. Yep. You can tell Declan uh, Ernest Vincent Wood the third sent yeah, and said uh, said hi. Speaking of all this travel, I have definitely had the travel bug lately. I wanted to go somewhere, do something. So enjoy your holidays. Gosh, I guess you're probably coming up on that same uh, bank holiday. Um, now that I kind of think about it. It's about that time of year, isn't it? Four eighteen. We probably have twenty more minutes, so I gotta get, try to get this into a space where I'm content. Waiting for those first few drops to fall. Rain is coming upon us. I hope you're hearing the, the thunder in the background and uh, it's bringing you uh, great peace. We'll see if we lose power or something crazy like that. Uh, then uh, <laughs> the live stream is suddenly gone. <laughs> You'll know. Oh yeah, they can hear it. I see it on the audio mixer. Nice. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna just shut my yapper for a little bit and just appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Can't make this thing up, you know. This is just uh, this is what what life in uh, Kansas is like. So, Charlene says, "Yep, the bank holiday is this coming weekend." Thanks again. I'm enjoying. Don't mean to take over the whole conversation. No, no. I, I, you I, are the conversation. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. Um, what one of the things that, I mean, you know, I can sit around and talk about uh, whatever, but then it's one of those things where. Uh, Really, you know, what's going to help um, everyone watching the stream and how can this time best be served uh, to you? I mean, otherwise I'm just, uh, I'm just sitting in here painting. And so.
Sounds so lovely. Kansas summers are hot, but we get these thunderstorms all the time in the early evening. Here's the rain. Here it is. I got goosebumps right now. I love it. That was the one thing I missed. Um, I, you know, I'd, I'd spend uh, a month or two in Kersavine, and then it would it would rain a lot naturally, but there wouldn't be the thunder. And I'm so used to the bo the both together, the both of them paired. This live stream just turned into a meditation app. Painting too is about these kind of amazing moments. So, I mean, just your presence while I'm making this piece is is a memorable moment for me. But There's then, seven people here. but then suddenly there is you know a thunderstorm kicks up and kicks in, and uh, and and here we are. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. It, it, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll look at these the section that I'm working on and I'll remember I'll just remember what I heard and what I experienced while I was making it okay with the uh, about 10 minutes that I have remaining before I've got a how about favorite medium mixes favorite medium mixes um, by far when I'm working in the studio I like uh, Chelsea classical studios uh, lavender spike oil medium. I, I, I like it because um, some people say that the odor is too strong and I understand it can get kind of um, menthol-y but it is but it's nice. It's very pleasant. Um, and um, uh, and I like it too because it, that's that Again, I'm trying to have the safest studio space I can, um, and so it doesn't have any chemical uh, uh, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, none of the stuff that uh, you're going to breathe in and um, like cause yourself harm. It looks like Charlene likes it. She said the combo of the thunderstorm and watching you paint is actually so relaxing. <laughs> Not only that, but she put an emoji with sunglasses. So. <laughs> That's great. It's really relaxing. So maybe that's what we should do. <laughs> that's right. Just really play. Right. We don't have to pay anybody to play thunderstorm sounds. I think we need to be recording our own though, because even those are uh, are copyrighted. Uh, certain ones, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. If 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 you're the person who recorded it, and someone is playing your recording of it, uh, yeah. They can you can be dinged for uh, copyright violation. In fact, we may even uh, I've heard of a few people um, just on on YouTube who have their videos taken down because of like a thunderstorm or something is is in it. No. And they and YouTube the uh, algorithm thinks that uh, that they played um, some sort of other audio or something. Yeah, it's funny. Um, so I mean, you... it's only so smart. Uh, we we we. 
we will uh, contend, contend, contend it for, um, okay. and you know it'll uh, contest. I guess is that the one? Yeah. Yeah, contest. Yeah, uh, and then uh, they will uh, hopefully you know it not be an issue, but. I guess the thunderstorm is the thing that's doing it because we just like peeked out at like eight people. <laughs> and Andy asked, "What do you like about it?" He was the one that asked about the favorite medium mixes. Um. Uh, so, so what I like, Andy, is primarily it's. Uh, so I've, tr I've tried a lot of like, air safe, and by that I just mean VOC free um, mediums, and. Um, what I like about it is when it's when I'm just applying it, and, and they and they mix a little bit of lavender spike oil with uh, le, uh, an extra kind of refined linseed oil, sometimes uh, with walnut oil. And so what I like about it is when I want to do my washes or I want to paint fast, um, the the lavender spike oil by Chelsea Classical Studio, it just really re responds. Um, in a way that feels like I'm using thinner, uh, like using Gamsol or using turpentine or odorless miner mineral spirits. All of those things are, I, I like that washiness that happens when I'm painting with it. When, you know, not, not necessarily this year, this layer, excuse me, because I'm in a kind of a different place. Um, but um, I really like, uh, I just like that it, it it feels like other thinners the thinner thinners that people generally use for oil, whereas there are a lot of there are various other safflower, um, alkyd mediums out there. Um, Gamblin makes a few that are they're nice. They have a gel. The gel's okay, um, but they're fluid safflower oil fluid or saf. Uh, that's a hard word to say, safflower, um, oil, medium, fluid, uh, it just doesn't respond in the same way that I want um, a, like a paint thinner to respond. So that's what I really love about the Chelsea Classical School, or the Chelsea Classical Studio Medium. I like that one quite a bit. All right, so uh, with these last few minutes, I'm just gonna try to um, soften some of these areas with this fan brush and um, uh, if, you, if you haven't seen any of these other areas yet, if you're just joining, uh, what I like to do is I like to follow um, my uh, the form of the fabric with this. And so, you know, I've done my best to just kind of wipe it clean. And then I just like to take it and kind of do this motion. And I know that didn't seem like much. Um, but I'll just kind of take this brush and pull it because um, in making these contours I'm, I'm kind of telling us that hey this fold is moving back in and around and behind the figure. And he said thanks for the thoughts, good stuff. Most welcome, Andy. I'm glad to glad to have you here. On a rainy Monday afternoon in Kansas. So I just have to clean my brush. I just wipe it off on some uh, paper towel that I have in here. Just every every time I go back in to make one of those marks, because if you don't, then you're just going to drag the the paint back around. So let's see if it, this really kind of shows up. So if I start here, 
and I pull this around. I don't know if it did. Um, similarly here, I pull it around, and it's. I think it's tough to see in the live stream, but it's really evident in person that each of these curves. There's this little. These are just pulling and creating these contour lines that are are just going to help us make sense out of the volume. So even in some of these bigger areas, I'll just use it to pull pull the paint down and around. So here, even though I've done most of my strokes this way, um, I'm going to kind of carry it here, across, and down. You know. I like it too because I think it makes a little bit of a, a textile texture. And you know, I've never been one to paint every single thread or um, to me it's just boring. Leave leave that for the cameras um, of the world. You know, as, as, a, as a painter I want to find information that I think is the most interesting and or is, you know, exactly what I need to um, achieve the goals for the painting. So, you know, there's a lot of information that I just I just leave out. Um, because it's just too, it's just too detailed. Um, so I can kind of pull all this white in here and create a little bit of a outflow like that. And then I have a little kind of buffer here and I'll, I'll just go over and I'll just see if there's anything that's really kind of bugging me that's just sort of sticking out. Because um, I've already done the heavy lifting with um, putting those, the major lights and shadow shapes in place and the rest is... I just want to make sure that I have everything just adequately rendered. So I think it, it's important too for me to think and realize that um, this painting is going to be, so knowing its its ultimate place, it's going to be about 20 feet in the air. And um, while I want to do, you know, a really good job rendering everything, um, it's going to be hard to make out a lot of the little details from that distance. And so rather than think about, okay, well that means I don't have to render it as carefully or something like that. Uh, it just means that I need to be more selective with what I choose to um, spend my time working on. Um, what is really going to be seen? How do I need to exaggerate some of the form so that it is viewable from a distance? And um, so really strong light shadow. Um, just think about it, you know, if you've traveled to Italy and you know, you go in some of these old churches and there's not really lights in, in the building, but then you go and you see a Caravaggio and you're like, okay, wow, I can, I can make out everything that, um, that he intended to do. Uh, not in, because he, he, he was also, I'm sure, thinking about where ultimately the piece would be in the end. Um, so I think those are th just thoughts to have. You know, if, if, especially if you're working on a commission and you have, you know, which this is a commission, uh, and I, ultimately I know where it's going to be and um, the plan for it. So, yeah, I think, gosh, I just don't want to stop. It's a great day. Some nice thunderstorm in the background.
Yeah, but you gotta go. <laughs> your family. That's right. That's right. So um, there's another good thing. Um, boundaries. You know, if 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 you're working professionally, it's just you really um, you really want to establish good boundaries. And so you know, evenings are uh, are kind of my time with uh, with my family, my wife, and my kids. And so you know, I just yep, I could I could paint my way into not knowing any of them, and and I would be uh, I'd be really sad and, and unfortunate. So. So we are gonna wrap it up now, I think. I think it's it's uh, it's good. I think I'm pleased. Just want to knock down a few things that are shining a little too brightly, catching the light. Um, so I think tomorrow uh, we're gonna jump into some skin tones. So, oh, man. Skin so tones. you should really come back tomorrow if you have the opportunity to. Um, and um, I don't know which figure we'll start working on first, but. Uh, there's two figures in the composition. You can see if you go back through some of the other uh, live streams, and um, yeah, we're gonna gonna get to some skin tones tomorrow, I think, because I basically I, I want to get to them. I wanna. So. Gonna be said always illuminating to watch and listen. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Andy. Hope hope to see you again. I appreciate you being here. Thanks. And and Charlene, thanks thanks to uh, for being here, Georgiana. Um, and whoever else, uh, will th appreciate it. It's not Georgia on it. Oh, Georgia. Georgia. Sorry. Uh, Georgia wants to know what time tomorrow, Central? Sure, um, Central, I'm going to try to get started. Um, this is always a hopeful. <laughs> I'm going to try to get started by about 9.30 Central AM. And um, I will have already mixed my color before that, if, I, if I've done well, my time management. And then... Uh, kind of paint for about two hours, break for about an hour and a half for me to have lunch with my family and uh, get the kids down for naps. And then coming back about 1.30 to, again, about 4.30 or 5. And that's the tentative plan. Sometimes life happens. So, um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back on tomorrow morning at 9.30. That's my goal. If, if not, it'll be sometime in and around there. And Casper Aldrich said, thanks. Brushstroke technique is helpful. Awesome. Thanks, Casper. We'll be back for more tomorrow. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye. We got six and a half hours.